In this video we're going to look at finding the surface area of 3D shapes. Let's start off with the surface area of a cube. In the question it will either tell you whether it's an open top cube or open top box or a closed top box. If it's open top it will only have five faces, if it's closed top it will have six. There are a couple of different ways that we could do this. The first way is to draw the net of this particular cube. Alternatively, we could simply find the area of each of the face and multiply that by six. We know that we've got six equal faces, so if I can find the area of one, we would go ahead and just multiply that by six. I'm going to draw a net, and with all of the examples, I'm going to draw a net on each, and you can decide which method you prefer. I personally prefer working out the area of each face and doubling it up. So what I'm going to do is just draw the net, and I'm going to assume that this is a closed top box. So we've got now six sides to the cube. So as stated in the, uh, earlier, in the question it will tell you whether it's open or closed top. So what I've got then is the cube and it'll look something like so. So I can put this part on just there. So each of these dimensions now is going to be four centimeters and we're just gonna have six of them. So this one is going to be four by four. We got four and four and all of the others are. So the area of this one is going to be 16 and the units are going to be centimetres squared. This one will be 16 as well, 16, 16, 16, and then the 16. So if we add all of those up, we've got six lots of 16 and that's going to give me now 96 and it will be centimetres squared. As it's an area, we give our answer as a squared value. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the other way. All I'm going to say is that I have six equal faces of four multiplied by four. I'm simply finding now the area of one of the faces, which is this one just here, or any of the others, and I'm multiplying my answer by six. So this will give us six multiplied by 16, which is going to give us exactly the same answer of 96 centimeters squared. So with a cube, as you can see, it's a lot easier just going this way. When we're talking about the surface area, it's everything that we can touch on the outside. So the area of this particular face, this face, and then the three other faces. The one round this side, the one round that side, and the one underneath. Okay, let's look at another shape. So this time we've got a cuboid. I could go ahead and sketch the net. I'm going to do that and then look at the other way. So let's consider the base first. We're going to have now a two by six. I'm then going to think about this side. If I have that side, I'm going to have a six by seven, which I'm going to have like so, that's going to be there. If I then think about the other side, I'm going to have exactly the same. I'm going to have a six by seven. So all I'm doing here is constructing one possible net. So what I've got there is the base. So this is the base and these are the two sides. If I look at this one here, I've got now a two by seven and I'll put that one on. So let's go ahead and do a two by seven. So two by seven is going to be just here. So let's do that. That's going to be the two by seven. If we think we've got one just here, we've got one over there. So I can go ahead and do that. So even if you don't use this method, it's giving us an opportunity now to go ahead and look at the nets of these particular uh, prisms. And then finally, I've got this one just here. Let's grab that one up. Uh, okay, let's just move that out the way so I can get that one. I want this one just here, and we're going to have another one of those. So this becomes the top, which I can put just there. So if we wanted to go this way, let's just put that there. That's now one possible net of this particular cuboid. I've assumed it's going to be a closed top one. So if we think this right here is going to be two and this is going to be seven. This end we've also got two and we've got seven. We've got two and we've got six. We've got here six and we've got seven. We've got the six and we've got the two. And this one is going to be the seven by the six. So if I just go around this now, what I'm going to have here is a seven times by six, which is going to give me 42. We're going to have centimeters squared. Remember, an area is a squared value. This one too will be 42. 
If we look at this one just here, seven times by two, that's going to give me 14. And then we're gonna have this one just here, which is going to be 14 also. This is a six by two, which is going to give me 12. This one is also a six by two, as that's identical, and that's a 12. So all I do is simply go ahead and add them up. So 14 plus 12 gives me 26, 68, 80, 122, 136. So adding them all up, I'd have 136, and that would be centimetres squared. Alternatively, what I could do is simply look now at three different faces. I'm going to have the green face. If I've got one of them there, I'm going to have one round this side. I'm going to have the blue face, which is going to be just here. If I think about this blue face, I'm going to have one round the other side too. Then I'm going to think about the red face, which is going to be the top. I know also that I'm going to have a red face on the bottom. So all I'm going to do now here is do two lots of seven multiplied by two. I'm going to add to that now two lots of the six times by seven. So the seven by two is the green one, the six by seven is the blue one. And then finally, I'm going to add to that now two lots of the six multiplied by two, and that's the red one. If we just look at these, it's all of the numbers multiplied by one another. So seven times by two, seven times by six, and six times by two. That gives me 14, two times by 14 will give me now 28. 42, six times seven is 42. If we double that up, we get 84. Six times two is 12, times it by two, 24. And if I add all of those up, we're going to end up now on here with exactly the same. So eight plus four is 12, we get 16, and we carry for one. We get 10, 12, add for one, and then we get 136, and that will be centimetres squared. So remember, your answer will always be in something squared, whether it's metres, centimetres, kilometres, it's always going to be squared if we're looking at the surface area. I prefer this method, but you can draw the net. Okay, this time we've got a cylinder. Check again whether it's an open top cylinder or a closed top cylinder. What I'm going to do here is sketch a net. I think a net really does help with this one. So I'm going to assume that it's going to be a closed top cylinder. So what I'm going to have is a top, and I'm also going to have a bottom. Out of the three that we've looked at, this is the hardest one to do. What we're going to have is for following. We're going to have now this particular curved section, and that curved section is going to look something like that. That's not massively accurate, but it will give us some idea. So let's go ahead and start working this out. We have a diameter of six on the circles, which means that we've got a radius of three. So radius of three, and these are two identical circles. So if we just go ahead and write this on, this is going to be three centimetres. So again, we're working with centimetres. This one is three, and this one is three. The area of a circle is given as pi r squared. So in each case, we're going to have pi multiplied by three squared. Three squared is going to give me nine. I'm going to write these now as exact values. So this is going to be nine pi, and that will be centimetres squared. The area of this one is going to be nine pi centimetres squared. So when we say exact values, I haven't written it as a decimal. I know my diagram isn't massively accurate, but the height of this now is going to be 12 centimetres. What we're missing now is this length right here. Once we have this length right here, we can find the area of this rectangle and add it to the two circles. This is the curved surface area. If we think about this though, what we've got here, this distance is the circumference of the circle. Just imagine if you take a tin of um, beans and take off the label. Say the label just touched. That is now, the length of the label is the circumference of a circle. So the circumference of a circle is two pi r or pi d. So we can say that the circumference is two lots of three times by pi or just six pi. So what we've got now is this length right here. And I'll just put that on, let's just show that. Uh, this length right here 
is going to be from, and we'll go from here to here, that length is going to be 6 pi centimetres. So if I just write this here, so this is going to be 6 pi. So the area of the curved section of this rectangle is going to be now 6 pi times by 12, which is going to give me 72 pi, and that will be centimetres squared. So we've got the area now of the rectangle, of the curved section. I've got now the circle. I've got the other circle. So if we add the 9 pi and the 9 pi and 72 pi, that's going to give me a total now, total surface area of 90 pi centimetres squared. So I've kept this nice and exact, and we can go ahead and find that in the calculator. So 90 times by, then we hit shift pi, and that's going to give us now 282.7, and that's correct to one decimal place. So we'll write now that this is 282.7 centimetres squared, and that's given to one decimal place. So let's just check that, uh, 282.7. That's perfectly fine. So if this was an open-topped cylinder, then we would just take off one of the nine pies. If it's closed top, we add both. So we're finding the area of the two circles on the end, and then we're finding the length now of this particular section, and then finding the area of the rectangle and adding them together. So as you can see with that one, it certainly does help with a sketch. Okay. Uh, this one now is a triangular prism. So if we wanted, we could go ahead and draw a net, or we could just work out the different faces. With this one, students often forget to put faces on. So let's just um, let's just go ahead and do this. With your uh, with your sketch, it doesn't have to be massively accurate. So all I'm going to do, let's just uh, let's just uh, spin this round. We will have that one, and then we'll put this just here. And then we'll do another one of those. So let's now put that one in place and we'll just flip this round. So if we flip it left to right, uh, there we go. That's what we're going to have. Let's just turn it around. There we go. So what we're going to have on this one, and you can do it however you like. Uh, if you want, you can go like so. Uh, in fact, I think it's going to be better. Let's just uh, let's spin them around. OK, let's have that one over there. And uh, in fact, I'll turn it around. That looks a bit better. Um, I'm just thinking the best way to, to look at this now. So let's go that way round. There we go. That'll do. So what I've got then is the following. I'm going to build this up. These are the two end bits. Then what I'm going to have now is a rectangle at the bottom. And we'll put the dimensions on. So with this one, let's put the rectangle just here. So this now is the bottom. Then what I'm going to have is this face right here, which I'm going to put on. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have this face. And then we're going to have now the back plate. So the back plate, and that'll look something like that. So if we just put that on, and I'll just move that into place, that's going to look something like that. So this now is a rough sketch. So if we put some dimensions on, what we've got is the following. We've got now six, we've got eight. We know that this is going to be 10, we're given this is 10. So if this one is 10, this one must also be 10 as well. We can see that from the diagram. This one is 12. This one is going to be 10. We know that this is going to be 10. This is 6. This is 8. This is 12. This one right here is going to be 8. Remember, this point here touches that point here. This point here touches that point here. That one is 8 and this one is 12. So if we go round, what we've got on the first one is a 12 by 8 which gives me 96, and again, we're working with centimetres. So this back plate would be 96 centimetres squared. We've got a 6 by 12, 6 times by 12 is 72, so that's 72 centimetres squared. Be careful now with these two triangles. We've got 8 times by 6, but we need to half our answer. So each one is going to be uh, 48 divided by 2, which is 24 centimeters squared so that's that one we've got this one just here so 24 centimeters squared and then finally we've got this front plate just here which is a 12 by 10 so that's going to be 120 centimeters squared so all we need to do at this stage is simply add them 
So if I add 96 to 24, that's 120. Then we've got 192. We've got 216. We've got 336. So let's just go ahead and check that, make sure I've added all of that up right. So we've got 96 plus the 24 plus now the 72 plus another 24 plus then the 120 and that will give me the total of 336. So we'll write now that this is going to have a total of 336 centimetres squared. That is the total surface area. It's everything that you can touch on the outside. Right, so did we need to draw the net? The answer is no. What I'm going to do is go around this and find now the area of each part. So I've got a triangle. The area of the triangle is the base times by height divided by two. And I'm going to have two of those. I'm going to have one just here, which is going to be exactly the same. So all I'm going to say then is that I've got two times by eight times by six divided by two. So all I've got is now the base times height divided by two. Then I'm going to add to that now a, and I'll put this on the, I'll draw the bottom one first. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to have this one, which is just here. That is going to be now the six by 12. So plus a six by 12. Then we're going to consider the back plate. And if we look at the back plate, we've got the back plate and that is the eight by 12. So plus the eight by 12. So plus now eight times by 12. And then finally, we've got the front plate, and I'll colour that in. This front plate right here is going to be the 10 by 12. So plus now the 10, so 10 by 12. So what do we have here? Well, we're going to have on there in total 48. We're going to have in total 72. We're going to have 96, and we're going to have 120. And you can see it's given us exactly the same. This one right here, let's just go ahead. This 48 corresponds to that one, and that one added up. The 72 is this one, the 96 is this one, and 120 is this one. So in an exam, either way will give you the marks. If you're asked to sketch a net, you're probably better off going that way. So that now is a quick tutorial on looking at finding the surface area of 3D shapes. Just check that you have all of the faces or all of the sides, and you understand whether it's open or closed top.